Let us try to understand linear inequalities and how to write their solution on a number line. So in this video, we'll just consider a few basics. And that is, when we, whenever we're talking about inequalities, we are talking about things which are greater than, less than, or greater than, equal to, or less than, equal to, right? So they have a symbol. Greater than symbol is like this. So that bigger end is greater than. For example, if I say x is greater than 5, then x is a set of all the numbers which are greater than 5. For example, could be 6, 7, 8, and so on. Less than. Less than symbol is in this fashion. That is less than. So that is a narrower end. You see, it is less than that end. So we can say x is less than, let us say, 4. So all numbers less than 4 forms a solution set for this inequality. So there is no just equal to sign, the greater than sign or a less than sign, right? So you see how different it is from equality. If I write x equals to 5, then my solution is just 5, one point, right? But if I write x greater than 5, I have infinite solutions. Everything greater than 5 forms the solution for this inequality. Similarly, everything less than 4 is a solution for this less than inequality. You can also combine greater than and less than with equal to sign. In that case, it becomes something like this. I could write y is greater than equal to, for example, 7. So the y value is more than 7. Now remember one thing. We should not always consider x as our variable. Our variable could be anything, correct? It could be x, y, z, a, b, c, d, whatever. Any number. So less than equal to, we say a number which is less than equal to minus 5, right? So you could have positive numbers, negative numbers, any number on this side of the inequality, right? So the ultimately when we solve in inequality, we are at present doing inequalities in one variable so the variable will try to keep it on the left side and these are the symbols which we are going to use so remember greater than means a symbol which is wider on this left side and narrower so that is to be read as x is greater than 5 we'll read it like this x is greater than 5 that is how you have to read it, right? So 5 is kind of a critical number for us. We are trying to check the value of x with respect to 5. So we call this 5, 4, 7, minus 5 as a critical numbers, right? So whenever I say a critical number, you should understand what is that number which makes or breaks the inequality. So it's critical. Now here, the last one, we could read this as n is less than equal to minus 5. Or this as y is greater than or equal to to 7. Remember, it is or, right? So it is y is greater than or equal to. So 7 is also a part of our solution. That is what we need to understand, right? Let me give you some examples here. For example, x greater than 5. We can have a number line and every number line will have a 0, correct? So we'll mark this point as a 0 for us. Now if I'm saying x is greater than 5, that means 5 is not included. Let us say this number is 5 for us and here we have minus 5 for us. Now when we say x is greater than 5, that means everything but 5. That means on the right side of 5, but not including 5. How to represent those things, right? So the symbols to use are like this. Whenever we have greater than, then we have a circle not filled in. So that circle means that 5 is not included, but starts from 5 and everything to the right side. So as you know, the numbers on the number line on the right are greater than. So the arrow pointing right gives us the solution on the number line. So on this number line, if I make a hole here at 5 and extend it towards the right with an arrow, that is 
representing the solution of x greater than 5. We'll adopt this strategy and write down the solution for the others. So what you can do here is, at this time you can pause the video and write down your solutions and then check with mine, right? So I'll first draw my number lines with 0 in the center, right? So number lines actually extend on both the sides, as you know, and anywhere you can mark a 0. Now, the next step is to mark the critical number. We have a critical number 4 here. So let me say this is my 4 and then 7. Let's say this is 7 for me. Minus 5. Let's say this is minus 5. So on your number line, mark the critical number. And then C for the condition of inequality. If it says less than, that means it's a hole. It is not filled up. So we'll just make a hole, right? In this case, it is greater than equal to. In that case, we'll fill the hole. If I fill, it means included. So the symbol here is a hole. And when we have equal to and less than, then it is filled up. Because we could take 7 also as a solution, right? 7 is a part of solution in this case. It is included, right? Now the other one is n is less than equal to. Since it is equal to, we'll make a hole and we'll fill it up. Since it is, it can also be equal to, right? So that is the next step. And third and final step is to draw the arrow in the right direction. When we say x is less than 4, less means left side. So less is left, so we'll just mark on the left side. Greater than or equal to 7. Equal to means filled in, which is already filled in. And greater than means right side. So we'll mark it on the right side. Here n is less than or equal to minus 5, so we'll draw an arrow towards the left side. Do you see that? That is how you write down your solution. Now, this number line represents the values of x. This number line represents x. This number line represents y. And this one is n. So these are my variables n, y, x, and x. And every point on a number line belongs to a set of real numbers. So we're talking about set of real numbers. So our assumption is that the numbers, whichever we are talking about, belongs to set of real numbers, okay? Real numbers are the numbers on the number line. Now, once we draw this, there should be a way to check it also. How should we check it? So the best checkpoint is origin itself. Always check with the help of origin. Now that is how you can perform a check. If I replace x with 0 and write 0 here, then what do I get? 0 greater than 5. Is it true or false? 0 greater than 5 is false. Therefore, well, the number is not on the number line, which is being represented as a solution. Now, 0 is not greater than 5, and our number line is to the other side. That means it is correct, right? 0 is not part of our solution, and it shouldn't be, right? Since 0 is not greater than 5. So, 0 is a good checkpoint. Now, in this case, 0 less than 4, does it make sense? Yes, it is true. 0 is less than 4. And as you can see, our solution includes 0. Here, y is greater than or equals to 7. If I replace y with 0, what do I get? 0 greater than or equal to 7, which is false. Therefore, 0 is not part of our solution. So, that's a good check. So we have checked it that our solution is correct. In this case, 0 is less than minus 5 is incorrect since 0 is on the right side. All the numbers on the right side should be greater, right? And our solution is towards the left. 0 is not included as it should be, right? So therefore, this is also correct. So we have tested all our solutions with the help of a checkpoint, right? So, let me summarize all this. When we are talking about linear inequalities, we know one thing, that we have more than one solution. In fact, we have infinite solutions. As you can see, everything to the right of 5, everything to the left of 4, everything to the right of 7, including 7, and everything to the left of 5, 
minus 5 including minus 5 are set of solutions for these four questions respectively. Do you see that? And that means everywhere we have infinite solutions since the number line actually extends from minus infinity to plus infinity. Correct? Another way of writing this solution would be from 5 to infinity. We'll talk about this in the next video. Anyway, so that is another way of representing the same solution. Now here, the symbols are greater than, wider on the left side, less than, wider on the right side. Greater than, equal to, wider with, equal to sign, wider on the left side. You see, so you put the variable on the left, your variable is greater than, equal to 7. And in this case, less than equals to means narrower on the left. So these are different ways of looking into the symbols and trying to remember them. Now, since I've introduced this, let me, let me just go take one more minute. Another way of representing the solution on the number line is to use these brackets. When I use a bracket like this, then the number is not included. So I can write this solution as a bracket on the line with an arrow. Do you see that? That means number 5 is not included. In this case, I could write a bracket at 4 and arrow on the other side. Do you see that? And in this case, since it is included, we will use square brackets. Square brackets means included. And parent, these brackets means not included. So whenever you have square brackets, then it is included. So that is another way of representing a solution on a number line. So you could include with a square bracket and exclude a number with the open brackets. So open brackets like a whole and square brackets means included, right? So that's an alternate way of writing your solutions. Both are correct and you can adopt the way you like or which is being used at your school. Now we'll move on and try to see how to solve inequalities and then represent the solution on a number line. Thank you.